Yay, awesome. Um, cool, so we are just gonna go over Empower Hour and how to find mentors in the startup space. And I'm Sarah Wadud. Um, and Tessa is here also kind of helping me go through this. Um, so that one's just our intro slide. Um, I do currently sit on the alumni advisory board and um, get to work with the Wells Institute really closely. I currently work at a startup and I've also founded my own startup. Um, it's been a crazy year in 2020 to kind of be in the realm and world of startups as I'm sure most everybody knows. But um, before we get started, I think the first question to ask yourself is, why are you interested in startups? and like what kind of a startup are you interested in? So whether that's something in the realm of social impact and social entrepreneurship or you know a tech startup, an e-commerce startup, what kind of startups are you interested in? Um, and then also the age old question of just why are you interested in startup? Because these founding questions will really help um, orient you to figure out who to network with, how to get your networks in those um, circles and then find your startup mentor and you know make it more easier for you to have access um, because that's something they will ask you like who interested in this startup and whatnot so that's one question that I think everyone has to kind of internally be introspective of on themselves on why they want to have a startup mentor whether that's because you want to one day found your own startup so that means you need to go find founders and um, if you're a female founder then you might want to find female founders as a mentor um, or if you want to you know be in product design or in the UI UX realm so kind of figuring out why you want to be a start part of a startup or why you need a mentor that's in a startup will help figure out how to get access to these mentors as well. And then next slide. Great, next slide. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Tessa. No, 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 sorry. Go back one more. Um, perfect. So how do you find mentors in the startup space? So this is something I love talking about, and um, I've definitely tried to sprinkle some COVID-19 pandemic friendly tips and advice while we go through the lecture. Um, there are top 10 things that I would recommend. Um, this is by no means an exhaustive list. Um, there are hundreds, if not tens of thousands of different ways where you can go and find a mentor in the startup space or even just get access to them. But these are just 10 of my recommendations. Um, and these are things that I have personally done to find my mentors and um, find folks that have equal um, you know, alignment with my goals or our startup's goals. So um, I'll kind of get to share my experience, but um, this is no by no means an exhaustive list. So those are 10 of the things. We'll go through them a little bit closer so we can go to the next slide and that will help us. So the first two I put together, which is networking events and entrepreneur hotspots. So if you want access to a startup uh, founder or someone to have be your mentor, um, you know, before COVID-19 in 2020, it was very easy to go to these networking events. You can go if you're a student, there's always student discounts or, you know, volunteer opportunities as a student at these events. Um, slash, I think even if you say, you know, I'm so-and-so and I go to UT or something, they usually tend to let folks in for free because we always love having students um, and young people around. Um, it always helps create more energy and you know, folks always love a fr friendly face. So networking events used to be kind of the best hub spot. Um, I know this year, a lot of them have moved virtual. Um, one of them that comes to mind is Lunch Club. That's a great one to um, be a part of and you can join as a student. Um, there's nothing, there's no cost, there's nothing affiliated and there's a ton of entrepreneurs. There's a ton of founders at Lunch Club. Um, it's basically one-on-one -on -one virtual networking um, versus being in a group of strangers and then kind of having icebreakers. Um, I love Lunch Club because it's one-on-one -on -one one so they kind of it's almost like a dating app um, where they kind of align and match you to folks that you kind of set your 
um, predetermined interests. So mine, for example, was e-commerce and social impact. So folks that I've met in lunch club are all folks that are interested in e-commerce or social impact or you know the garments industry by by some means. And um, we've talked to them. And you know there are folks that are currently in startups. They've founded startups or they're looking to work at a startup. And so they, you just kind of network and go through that. Um, for me personally, I've always believed that your network is your net worth. So I'm a big believer in networking. So when we had to move it to virtual, um, I you know went ahead and did it. Hopefully there will be a time when networking comes back in real time, um, in real life. Uh, but yeah, so that's one. And then entrepreneur hotspots, again, this, I think they kind of go together, you know, um, back in the day, it used to be, you had to go to like San Francisco and the Bay area. And that was like the big hotspot, but I will definitely say, I mean, this week alone, Austin has broken the internet because, you know, Elon Musk has moved here apparently. So um, Austin, I think, has definitely become its own entrepreneur hotspot. There's always a lot of things going on regarding tech, regarding um, startup culture here, you know, Capital Factory and all the other great hubs that we have are definitely hotspots. So if you want a mentor that's in a startup, go to those hotspots. Um, we're lucky that we live in Austin, Texas, so we don't have to travel too far. Um, UT has a great um, network into getting access to these tributaries as well. Um, I would also kind of argue that UT is its own hotspot for entrepreneurs and you can find folks there that have already started companies or are on the verge of starting companies. And you know, there's a reason it says what starts here changes the world. So I 100% believe in it. Um, I definitely think you don't have to go too far because Austin is its own hotspot, but like, you know, Colorado is an up and coming one. New York has already been one. So you don't have to travel too far. We're lucky that you can go to Austin. So I didn't have to, um, you know, put any stamps on my passport for this one, but we can go to the next one. Um, social media. Okay. So I almost didn't write social media for this one and was going to write specifically LinkedIn and Twitter. So that's why I put a caveat in. Um, but the third one, and I think this is a big one now for the year that we're in with 2020, but also going forward. Um, I put LinkedIn and Twitter, um, at this point, I think LinkedIn and Twitter and every social media has like a video stories edition. So, um, that being said, DMing folks and founders on LinkedIn, um, or my personal favorite is Twitter. Facebook has also become like the new age LinkedIn, as we probably all know. These are great places to find founders, to find mentors, for, to find folks that are in the realm of where you want to be. Um, like Facebook, for example, has a bunch of these female founder groups. There's Female Founders Texas, there's Female Founders you know, um, Collective, um, and then each city and hub has a different female founders group. So if you're in Houston, there's a female founders group Houston. Um, and it's just like folks that, that are, excuse me, like you and me that are founders and are more than willing to have a, you know, a chat with you or talk to you about your goals. And then in that way, it becomes a bigger conversation. So that's a great one. LinkedIn, definitely, you know, get LinkedIn premium free, free for a month and DM everybody um, with the 15 free credits that you get and DM the folks that you really want to, you know, have in your circle or have access to or a founder that you really, really admire. That's an easy one. Twitter is a really great one to also have access to founders because I think that's an easy place where you don't have to have a LinkedIn premium membership. You can just kind of DM them. And I think Twitter gets forgotten in social media a lot of times, but that's a great place because most folks are there for commentary for um, you know educated commentary there's a lot of pundits on there and there's a lot of people always willing to engage in conversation there so for social media I almost didn't want to write social media because it's not the whole gambit there's specific ones um, I would say probably not TikTok <laughs> I think that's a more funnier one I don't think you're going to find your startup mentor there but yeah definitely LinkedIn Twitter and the Facebook groups are a great one um, the biggest thing that I can say is like don't be scared to ask for help in this realm and in this world of startup, I think what's really great is that if you just ask, um, there are usually at least 10 people that will show up to give you either advice, give you um, uh, mentorship guidance, or give you help in whatever way and capacity they can. So don't be afraid to show up and ask those questions. Next slide, please. 
Um, cool. So four and five, again, these are two that I just in my brain kind of ranked together. So small business development center and industry centers. Um, these are usually places that provide resources for startups and founders. So every city has one like the Austin Small Business Dis Development Center or, you know, Pflugerville Business Center. Um, industry centers are kind of the same thing with like expos and things like that that come South by Southwest, ACL. ACL surprisingly also has a startup edge to it, which I know it, you know, it's a music festival, but when you do the other things and you go uh, be a part of it, you can see there's a bunch of startup initiatives there too that ACL really um, supports. So all these to say that each city, um, so, you know, start local, start small. Um, you don't have to DM Elon Musk to have him be your mentor, but you can probably find the Elon Musk of Austin and have him be your mentor. So start local and find these chapters in your city, um, because this is kind of like the backdoor way to have access to startup founders or mentors in general. Um, these are places that founders and folks that work in startup actually go to to get resources, to get funding grants and whatnot. So you kind of come in through the side door um, and have access to whoever they have on their roster, find the startup that you, maybe you like, um, and then gives you access to figuring out who to contact and how to go about it. Next slide, please. Um, score and indirect competitors. Again, these are ones that I feel like can kind of be um, the same in rank. So score Austin is another um, development sector here. So they have like 11,000 score has 11,000 volunteers. Um, and that's 11,000 volunteers nationwide. So that, they have that many chapters nationwide. And they're, again, another one of those great initiatives that help support founders and startups with resources and funding and um, grants and, you know, even help recruit um, folks to join startup. Um, and so in that sense, this is a great hub and place to kind of find startups slash folks that you are interested in talking with, engaging with in whatever capacity, because, um, you know, the conversation for later is how to get the mentor to mentor you, but this is just how to find those mentors. So I'm going to give you resources and places to find the places or, or show up to places where they are and exist. Um, the other part can be a different conversation. Um, and then indirect competitors, that one is a bit tricky, but I think is also a relevant way to kind of figure out how to find mentors. So if you're Let's say, for example, you want to find a mentor in Bumble, um, which we all know Bumble is headquartered here in Austin. Um, so if you, you know, at this time, if Bumble was still small, wanted to go and have someone be a mentor from Bumble, you could go to Tinder and, you know, kind of talk to some folks there, have them mentor you. Then if Bumble was your end goal, you can come back to folks at Bumble and strike up a conversation and easily talk about like, hey, I saw that you guys are doing this, you know, your direct competitor or indirect competitor, Tinder, I had conversations with blah, blah, blah. And you can bet that they'll want to have a very good conversation with you or engage with you in some way, in some capacity. Um, you know, in, in terms of this realm, I think what's more relevant for y'all is that finding mentors usually helps land those internships, secure those summer internships, and hopefully kind of, you know, set you up for some role or some something and uh, career at, at these startups and organizations. So so having a conversation with indirect competitors never seems to hurt anybody. Um, next slide, please, Tessa. Okay, so these two, I think, I'm pretty sure you guys all know about, because um, I did it a lot at grad school at UT, where I volunteered for Troop Fest, I volunteered for um, ACL and South by Southwest, and any capacity in any role. Volunteering is a great way to get a yourself out there, get your name out there, get yourself recognized by the organization, um, and then just kind of network and find f folks there that have, you know, the same um, kind of goals. And hello, if you're volunteering at an organization, you guys have already kind of checkmarked that one first step. You'll now be able to talk about that organization, that activity or festival, whatever you're volunteering at. That's a great place to find mentors. Um, some of my great greatest mentors have come from just me volunteering and striking up a conversation at, you know, whatever event we were at, and then just staying in touch. Um, and then friends and family, this is another one that I feel that speaks really greatly to something that we tend to forget. We tend to forget that our friends and our family and that being mom and dad also have a pretty good network and setup, and we tend to underplay or undervalue those. Um, this is your kind of 
place um, and permission for me to not do that. Um, don't undervalue your friends and family because um, they probably have their networks that can help you, you know, reach out to folks that you want to. They could even help guide you to folks that you want to have access to. Um, you know, it's not cool to go to mom and dad sometimes, but some of my folks that I have found to be investors or mentors have come from my friends and family round. And that's so important, um, especially when you do become a founder and you have to raise a friends and family round. So definitely don't undervalue or underlook your current network. Again, that's where I feel like, you know, your network is your net worth. And so don't um, bypass the current network that you have access to and forgo that just to have access to, you know, the higher network that you kind of are wanting to have um, and be a part of. And then next slide, please. Okay, cool. So this one email um, I put in there because obviously we're in 2020 and it's pandemic and we're about to be in 2021. And email has been the greatest champion, I think, for this year in terms of how we network, how we get, get access to folks and how we um, even have a conversation. I mean, my email has been exploding. There are times where my inbox, I like literally can't look at because there's just too many conversations happening there. Um, this is a great place to find founders, to find the startups, to find mentors, to find, you know, all of that. Um, if you, are a founder, then this is a little secret that I'll share with you guys. So hunter.io is, um, and it's not an app, it's a website you go to, you type in an organization that you, you know, you want to, you want an email for. So say I want um, Whitney Hurd's email. So if I typed in Bumble and then Whitney, it will actually find her exact email and give it to you. So that's like the greatest asset as a person. So as a founder, I know I've used hunter.io to figure out, okay, I need said investor's email and I need him to talk to us. So how do we find it? So this is kind of a backdoor way for you to find a startup mentor um, is to go to hunter.io, find the person that you want and have them figure out what their email is. Nine times out of 10, they have the right email. Um, and so their database allows you to kind of give access to that. And then it's just about sending the right email and saying, hey, I'm so-and-so, I go to school at UT and you know, I'm looking for a mentor in this space or hey, I'm so-and-so, I really am interested in what you're doing, would love to have a chat with you in some form. Here's my calendar link. Um, and then it just kind of is so easy. They just need to find your calendar, set up a time and it's like good to go. So I don't think email and email networking is going away for a very long time. I mean, folks in startup world are investing so much into email marketing. So I felt like this was a really great way to kind of find your channels to get networking. And then obviously through email, you know, get um, oh, one of them that we missed on social media was like Slack. Slack has become, I think, the 2020 savior um, of in terms of networking. There are so many subgroups, you know, um, KS has their own, uh, the Wells Institute has their own Slack channel that if you're not a part of, definitely join. But um, Slack has been a great way to get in front and communicate with folks. So that's one that I would say join those sub channels that you feel are interesting because everybody on there is wanting to help you shine in some capacity or find you a mentor or find you an internship or whatever it is that you're looking for. So join Ladies Who Lunch. Um, that's a Slack channel. Ladies Who Launch is a Slack channel. Female Founders is also on a Slack channel. So all of those subgroups on Facebook have all got an ulterior Slack sub channel that you can easily be a part of and find folks that are a part of a startup that you wanna have access to. So that being said, um, I don't think email is going away either. That, that's a great place to start and have some of those conversations of how to um, get access to mentors. And then I think our, that brings us to our last slide. So this one I put out there, this isn't um, um, a numbered uh, a recommendation, but the conclusion of this should be that you just need to get out there, get yourself, um, obviously not physically out there at this point because we can't, um, but you know, get yourself out there virtually and when we can safely in IRL as well, and just be open to saying yes um, to whatever conversation and opportunity comes your way, because those will be the ways you kind of find those right mentors, find those right connections and find that network that you're wanting to be a part of. So don't be shy about being a part of it, being a part of the conversation and engaging in that dialogue. Um, that's the only way you're going to make this work. And I think that kind of ends our session. <laughs>